So I thought, okay, this time I'm gonna outsmart my own psychology. I'm gonna change the settings on my watch. And that actually kind of blew up in my face. So super excited to be back out again, training for another race, uh, knocking out uh, four miles today, so that's good. Before I look ahead though to the Duke City Marathon, I should probably look back to the race I just ran, which uh, wasn't exactly perfect. <laughs> anyway, looking back to the race, I feel like I made three big mistakes, so let's lay them out. Now before I get into the list, I should just tell you it's best if you watch the race video first if you haven't seen it. It's three minutes long and paints a pretty vivid picture of my half marathon, including when things went a little sideways. With that said, first mistake is the most obvious one, ignoring race conditions. I can look at you right now and tell you that heat and humidity will make you run slower. I know that intellectually, but when you're at a race and you're feeling what you're feeling, you're all hyped up, it's very easy to be like, that doesn't apply to me, I'll be fine. But of course, how you start a race has a major impact on how you finish your race. It's like one of the laws of running, yet I still did not make any adjustments, and obviously that was not sustainable. Now number two is something I've struggled with and something that you might be guilty of yourself. That is letting data mess with your head during a race. And here's what I mean. In previous races, I'd see my split times come up on my watch after every mile. And I found myself, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, trying to adjust as a result of whatever time I saw on my watch. If I was a few seconds behind for a mile, oh, I gotta adjust and speed up. Or if I was a little bit too fast, gotta adjust again. Next thing you know, you're making adjustments to the adjustments to the adjustments, and it just turns into a, a giant mess. So I thought, okay, this time, I'm gonna outsmart my own psychology. I'm gonna change the settings on my watch. And that actually kind of blew up in my face. See, my solution was to hide all my pace data so I never knew exactly how fast I was going. The problem is that I just started to guess my pace based on how I felt, and I felt like I was behind even though I was actually on target for a big chunk of the race. So in a way, I may have needlessly psyched myself out because I thought I was in a hole that didn't actually exist. Honestly, I'm not even sure what the best solution is here. So if you have any ideas, let me know. All right, mistake number three was just not taking the time to recover the right way during training. Like if you ask me right now to run a 16 mile long run, no problem. You ask me to foam roll for 10 minutes, I'll tell you what, I will find every excuse to not do it. I really dislike foam rolling. I don't know why, I just dislike it. I went into this race after weeks of being really tight on my right side. And I was trying everything but foam rolling to fix it. The massage gun, I was cupping, I was stretching. But I didn't feel better until I pulled this guy out. After the race. Yeah. So there you go. You live, you learn, then you pick yourself up and get back out there. At least that's my plan. Thank you.